This is a big exercise in democracy, and you can see it alive in this parliament. The first projections are just out, still very early. In some countries, like in Italy, voting is still ongoing. We're still waiting to get the results from a number of countries. So we have to be very cautious. However, from the first projections, it looks like the constructive pro-European centre has held. When you, said, when you say that you like a pro-European majority, you mean the same majority of the current legislature or a new one? Well, it depends. Uh, the political groups uh, will start to meet us from tomorrow. Uh, this will be an interesting part of the process where group leaders and their representatives will come together and say, how is this parliament going to look like? European Parliament does not have a government and an opposition. It works with majorities. And where that majority will be looks like it will be in the centre. As a member of the European People's Party, would you see likely more cooperation with some, at least, ECR parties? That's not up for me to say. You will need to ask the EPP leadership and all the leadership of the different political groups. So let's see. Let's see. It's too early. And as a president of the European Parliament, are you worried about the fact that we see that in some countries uh, Eurosceptical forces are on the rise? Well, having full respect of the democratic result that uh, members uh, are elected by their own citizens, those members come with a responsibility, a responsibility to represent their citizens in the decisions that we will take in this hemicycle over the next five years. Those decisions will be related to security, to climate, to digital, to justice, to rule of law, uh, to competitiveness. That responsibility lies with each and every member. Let us see, let us see and let's work towards majorities in favour of Europe. And in terms of turnout, as you said, that it's an alive exercise of democracy, what result do you expect? Well, we will see. It's still too early. Uh, in some countries we see that the turnout is slightly higher. In some countries we see, of course, the reality that this election is two weeks later than usual or has not been since 2009. That in some countries you had a little bit of election fatigue because of the fact that there were presidential, parliamentary, national elections just a couple of weeks before. You have some countries where um, school holidays have already started. So keeping all this in mind, if we will see an uptick in uh, the numbers of people having voted, then we can really say that people have voted for Europe and have taken the decision rather than let others decide for them.